This content is for web development nerds only. I want to see hunched shoulders, coffee, more coffee, and absolutely no exercising. Welcome nerds. I want to talk about how Shopify themes re-render page sections when you make a change to the cart. It's kind of weird and I guarantee absolute fascination. When I click add to cart, you'll see some things on the page change. JavaScript has made a fetch request. Um, we can open the network tab and see what's going on. This is the form data being sent out when we click add to cart. Because we're adding an item, obviously we have to pass to the back end information about the uh, product we want to add. But we also have this sections part. What is this? Well, in the sections, we are passing the names of liquid templates. And if we look at the response we get back, we have here as well a sections property. And it has those template names that we passed in containing now HTML values. Shopify is taking advantage of the fact that because the cart is managed on the back end, all changes to the cart, add, remove, update, doesn't matter, they all create a fetch request. So we click add to cart. That creates a request containing product info and page template names. On the back end, that update cart request is processed. And now that the cart is updated, we can re-render the specified templates and send the response. And somewhere in our theme, there has to be JavaScript to process that response, of course. So that code would iterate over these sections. In the case of the Dawn theme, it's going to, each of these is not only a liquid template name. So there is a cart icon bubble dot liquid file in my theme files. There's also a cart icon bubble ID somewhere in my HTML. So the code that processes this response is going to find this ID in the HTML page, find that element, change the inner HTML of that element to this HTML that was rendered from a liquid template on the back end. And in the case of the Dawn theme, it's this render contents function that does exactly that. That raises a tantalizing question. Can I make my own liquid files, pass them in here, the names of the templates in here with a fetch request, and get them to render on the back end and send the result back to me? One way to find out. I want to make sure this actually has a liquid value in there to render so I can make sure it's working. And this part might be a little specific to the Dawn theme, but um, I have to add the um, template name to cart notification get sections to render in order to have it sent out as part of the request when I add to cart. So let's add something to the cart and have a look at the request. And we can see that it did send out, I like big butts as a section. Let's check the response. And here it is. And for the contents, it says this many items three. And we can see that three is the updated value for our cart count. So that works. Let's look at another free theme called Refresh. Hmm. Uh, preview. And this theme has a drawer cart. So I'm just going to add something to the cart real quick. And we can see in the request in this theme, it's asking the back end to re-render cart drawer dot liquid and cart icon bubble dot liquid. So because this theme has different page sections, obviously the uh, details are going to be a little different. But you will still see those coming back 
in the response. Some JavaScript diehards might say, why not just update everything with JavaScript? Um, I think Shopify prefers to use Liquid when it can, because first of all, the pages are already built in Liquid, but also because sometimes updating page elements with JavaScript involves some duplication of knowledge or work. Um, and I'll give you a quick example. Within this shopping bag link, in here we have these two lines that say visually hidden, cart and three items. Both of these lines are accessibility features. So if you were consuming this page through a screen reader, when you get to this part, it would say cart three items. Let's look at the liquid that creates this line of HTML. So this is it right here. Basically this chunk of liquid translates into um, three items or what have you. And if you're not sure what's going on here, you can see that there's a filter that is the T filter, which means translate. And into that translate filter, we're passing a variable count, which contains the number of items that are currently in the cart. So whenever you see translate, you can be pretty sure that you're looking for a locale file to see what is actually gonna be put onto the screen. So let's look into the English locale file to see what's going on with this. It's sections, header, cart count. And here it is, sections, header, cart count. Now you'll see there's a little formula in here. If there's one item in the cart, the formula says take the count and put the word item after it. If there's anything other than one, take the count and put items after it. So this knows how to pluralize this English phrase, and it also knows how to sort of construct the phrase. If we look at a different language, like Russian, here's the cart count in Russian, and you can see that the way they pluralize is completely who knows what's happening, and that the count comes after the word for item. The point I'm making is that in order just to update this one line using JavaScript, we have to show the JavaScript how to do something that Liquid already knows how to do very well. And yes, we could do that. We could update this with JavaScript and get it to work with all the languages. But why do it if we don't have to? So, web developers, have you seen this technique before outside of Shopify for updating page sections by kind of piggybacking on cart changes. And do you like it? Is it good design? And if you ever made a Shopify theme, did you take advantage of this? Leave it in the comments. Bye.